Waves and rocks. This movie has been shot by waves and rocks. How appropriate for an ocean dub, am I right, folks? <laughs> I'll be here all week. Oh, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> Pickle, I didn't know you felt that way about waves and rocks. Fine, we'll get them all. Jesus. No, we still have 13 other movies to look at. And they no, all Piccolo. We need those rocks. What are the, ra what the, are the waves, waves going to crash into? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Piccolo, voiced by Scott McNeil. Okay, now I, I do, I do, pref I do prefer Scott McNeil as evil Piccolo's voice. Uh, I would agree. I actually do really like Scott McNeil's performance as Piccolo uh, for the Ocean Dub. Um, but here's one thing I never really understood: if you watch this, if you watch the televised version of this, this scene is completely omitted. Yeah. Why? I've never seen this scene before. <laughs> really? You see, that's my point exactly. Yeah, you, they, they cut this opening part out of the... the like, whenever it's being aired on Toonami and stuff like that, they always cut out this opening sequence, and I never understood why. It I mean, certainly what... explains why Piccolo got involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like... Because, you know, what I, what always bugged me about this movie was that it, it takes place before Raditz, right? So uh, why is why during the Raditz sequence is Piccolo and Goku working together such a new thing, when according to this movie it's happened before? Is that part of why this movie can't be canon, or is it canon? Or is it, it, that... it's one of those few movies that's kind of sorta canon. Here's why I don't deem it canon. Because Garlic yeah. Jr. Saga's filler. <laughs> well, well there's, that's the second reason. <laughs> the first reason is... The begin Google when Gohan Google gets kidnapped, Google. this is this ha this has to be before Raditz comes to Earth, right? Because when Raditz lands on Earth, that's when Goku introduces Gohan to Bulma and Roshi. Yeah, it, it's one of those time weird things. Yes, yeah, so, so I that's and that because Garlic Junior Saga is completely yeah. fucking filler. Yeah. And it shouldn't. Yeah. Oh wow, this intro is completely different. Yeah, uh, it's been a very long time. Uh, yeah, the um. Yeah. If I remember correctly, the uh, intro changed significantly early on. Yeah. Did they play this Japanese opening on like no. American TVs? No. Oh. Uh, if you if you guys bought the movie on the VHS DVD, yes, it did. Yeah, not on TV though. Because I'm like I'm here in Chala Head Chala right now. Yeah. So. Yes. In the TV broadcast, it was Rock the Dragon. Um, yeah. The the all right dead no the first Dragon Ball Z movie I didn't see was actually the world's strongest. Yeah. Um, that Dead Zone was second to me even though they were switched around here. Um, but this and the world's strongest was actually the first to introduce me to the Japanese soundtrack of Dragon yeah, Ball. Yeah, because they actually didn't change the Ocean Dub didn't actually change that for for whatever yeah. reason. It, I, I, I never understood that they they leave the soundtrack alone for the Japanese for the movies, but they changed it they up it up for the TV series in general. I never really got that. Oh, because well, they want to make it more palatable to American children, you know. Well, I guess with the the, the movies, they all have their own soundtracks, right? Mm, they do use a lot. No, not really. They use most of the TV themes. Oh, well, maybe it may be a bit higher quality, but like the only exception I remember was Tree of Might. Yeah, that had a few that, different. That tracks. soundtrack was completely altered to have the the Ocean Dubs TV soundtrack at the yeah. time. And even then, it was it wasn't even shown as a whole movie. It was broken up into three episodes. Yeah, it was introduced as like a filler thing. Yeah, and then it was later shown as a full movie. Remember when Gohan's life was incredibly boring? <laughs> when did it pick up? <laughs> well, that see, there was a time he got kid. That was when he got kidnapped by Raz, then kidnapped by Piccolo, and then thrown out of that big rock. <laughs> And then he comes back from Namek, and everything is studying again. Oh, hi, Ox King. You're rarely ever seen. <laughs> he hasn't even ever done anything since Dragon Ball. Well, he never did anything in Dragon Ball. <laughs> no, he gave them a Dragon Ball he, at one he, point. He wore, a, he wore a helmet with goggles on it, he made a lot of noise, he was scary and imposing, and he had a daughter with a laser cannon on her head. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Round him up and take him down. The terms of this contract are simple. Not my hip. <laughs> to be honest, the Ox King is one of those remnants of Dragon Ball that doesn't really mesh with Dragon Ball Z. Mm. 
no. Well, late Dragon Ball Z in particular, yeah, because back, you know, because Dragon, Dragon Ball Z, early Dragon Ball Z, might as well have just been an extension of the original Dragon Ball. Yeah. With with, with yeah. the stakes, with the stakes raised, obviously, yeah. but. Yeah, uh, you know, but after Super Saiyan sent to the fray and Frieza got uh, the Frieza plot turned all serious and all that, it it just became uh, a bit more. Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> well, Oolong just didn't make any more sense. Well, Oolong was never useful except for that one time. But, yeah. yeah, but at least he fit in with Dragon Ball. Z they really started. Oolong... Uh, it was like they just bring Oolong back every time. Uh, every time they do it in Z, I just wonder why he's there. I guess just as the like the the bridge between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, just to give you a reminder that hey, remember with these, remember this series. Remember when we used to do stuff. <laughs> and yet, that, and yet, Toriyama somehow completely forgot about Launch. <laughs> <laughs> he appears. Launch appears for two seconds. Yes, I, I, I know. Dies, and that's it. Well, in the manga, anyway, but. Uh, I know she's in the uh, anime too. I think. I think my family's getting killed. <laughs> my stomach sense is tingling. <laughs> oh. I, I I love uh, Goku's approach to fishing. He just jumps in the water, grabs them by the tail, and then yanks them out. Hey, it's a 100% success rate. Yeah. Keep going as fuck as he believes. <laughs> I was like, I think when he was growing up in the woods, like grandpa, he, he grandpa used, never taught him. No, he used his tail. He cast use of it. He he did, but you know, I, I don't think he knows fishing rods exist. It's always weird going back to this this time in Dragon Ball Z because this is back when Goku you know, didn't really fly all that much. Well, that and the, in terms of character design, everyone still had very rounded edges. Yeah. Because you know, by the time we got to Frieza, everything became sharp and angular yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And it's just weird going it back to see you know, people look like they have a little meat to them. Scanning for yeah. targets. And it, as much as we'll comment on how the voice acting differs, I will give credit to Ocean Goku and Shanshima because they do sound somewhat similar. And they do a good there job with them. Two ocean dub Gokus. Yeah. Uh, one was the first one. The first one was Ian somebody. Sinclair. And then he was replaced by someone Peter I only know their first names. Uh, Peter replaced Go Ian mid Namek. Uh, uh, this is still uh, because I, yeah because it's weird though because um I, I, I'm trying to hear Goku I think it was Peter for this Goku and it was Peter again for World Strongest Ian came for the Tree of Might which was weird because Tree of Might is the, the third movie it's the third movie and Ian was Goku for the first two seasons of Dragon Ball Z. Okay, here, here's a question. Why did they take all of Gohan and not just his hat? Eh. Mm -hmm. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's no reason to take this kid with us. No. There are a bunch of idiots, that's why. I mean, I question the logic of putting the hat of Dragon Ball on the hat. Is that just like screaming for people to yank him off the street? Well, it, it's it's an idiot move, but uh, not very many people actually know about the Dragon Balls. That and they live out in the woods in the middle of nowhere anyway. So shrug. <laughs> well, I mean, I can I can I can accept Goku doing it because he's a fucking moron. But these people are supposed to be smarter than that, I assume. It, it it's a sentimental. Um, it's the four star thing. ball. So. Yeah, it was his. It was Goku's grandfather's treasured memento. And also, as for these people, <laughs> smart. <laughs> no. The corp is impressed. Well done. Good shooting, mates. Oh hi, Do you guys. Remember when uh, Dragon Ball was about the Dragon Balls? <laughs> Good times. <laughs> How would you know, Roshi? You've never seen them. <laughs> that it hey, you guys want to help? Well, Kr well Krillin will, but... Uh, after, oh. like, 
a after the Frieza saga ended, because the Frieza saga was about Frieza looking for the Dragon Balls, but after the Frieza saga ending ended, the Dragon Balls just sort of stopped being important. 